Hello guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org. Um, we talked a couple the last few tutorials about one-dimensional arrays. In this tutorial, I'm going to get into multi-dimensional arrays. Uh, most specifically, just a two-dimensional array. Um, once you get out of th into the three and four dimension of array, it's it's very complicating, and um, I. I, I, I don't know off the top of my head what you would need that for. Maybe some type of crazy science thing, but or physics thing, but who knows. So let's show you the syntax for a multidimensional array. The difference, let's, let's type out a simple uh, one-dimensional array and show you the syntax again, just to remind you. Let's see, make it real simple, three, four, and five. Close that off. Okay, so there's your one dimensional array. And if you remember in the for loop, or when you print out uh, an element out of this array, you index it by saying num, and in these uh, brackets, you put the index number. So my options would only be 0, 1, and 2 because there's three elements, and remember it's the, the off by one problem. In, that causes a lot of beginners troubles but remember to start counting at 0, 1, 2. So let's say let's just put 2 so it should print out a 5. Okay so you're using one uh, index to reference a one dimensional array and the amount of indices that you need to reference is pretty much the dimension of the array. So let me now create a two-dimensional array and show you what this is. Let's say int um, num2. And what we're going to do is do the brackets and we're going to do another set of brackets. Then we're going to say equals and just to make this easier, you can do it all in one line, but just to show how it works. Let's open and close some curly brackets. Make sure the semicolon's there. And a two-dimensional array you can think of, and it actually is an array of arrays. So what you want to do is let's set this first array right here. Uh, nine. Uh, what's some other numbers? Twenty-seven. Whoops. Curly bracket. And then we're going to put a comma, and then we're going to do another one. And I'm putting them on top of each other because it's going to be a little bit simpler to explain the indices. Uh, 45, 12, uh, 19. Make one more row. And let's say 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Alright, so you may be wondering, whoops, I didn't mean to put semicolons, these are commas. And that should be nothing. Okay, so let me show you what it would look like if it was all on a single line. If you're just a quick programmer, that's what it would look like. But because I'm trying to do a demonstration, show you how to reference the rows and the columns, let's just do it this way. Okay, so as you know, rows, that's row, well in this case in computer counting that's row 0, that's row 1, and that's row 2. And each of these are columns, so each index is a column. And in here, it always goes rows, columns first. So you may be wondering, how do I reference uh, 12? How would I print that value out? Well, let's see. We're going to system dot out dot print line, and we're going to call num two array, and we're going to have two brackets. But we need to call um, specific. Uh, let's see. What does it say? Syntax zero two in misplaced construct. So we need to put the value in here to get this out. So what is the value? So the first one, remember, is rows and the second one's columns. So 12 is in row 0, 1. So you're going to want to put a 1 right there. And then how many columns is it in? Remember this is 0, 1, 2. 
So if you call num2 at positions 1 and 2, whoops, that's not running the program. There we go. Okay, so then you get the 5 is from up here, but the 12 is what we were looking for. So we got that. Uh, you may be wondering, this is a, uh, e each, each row has the same amount of elements in it. In Java, you do not have, that's not necessary. For instance, I could have that, but I was just trying to make everything look pretty. Uh, uh, one reason, um, a two-dimensional array can come in really handy is if you have a board game, let's say checkers or something like that, uh, you're going to have a grid uh, layout of, if you can imagine, you know, um, there's a, a black square, white square, black square, white square, black square, and, and just picture the ch checkerboard right here. Well, that can be drawn with a two-dimensional array. And you reference each indice as you go along. Well, let's see how to print this out with a for loop. Um, just gonna put in some new values in here just to get it to four. That really doesn't matter. I don't even know why I did it, but it's not as simple as you think. It is simple to make the for loop, but it's not just one for loop. So let me show you how it's done. And uh, let's see. We're going to say int row equals zero. And we're going to say while row is less than num2 dot length. And we're going to in increment row. Okay. And now we're going to do what's called a nested for loop. And what nested means is it's going to be there's going to be another for loop right here and it's going to be nested within this for loop and the, the nested for loop is going to control the columns so let's say for int, and we'll just say call to be short so we don't have to write it all out while call is less than and pay close attention to this one while call is close to num2 and we're going to put one bracket right there dot whoops Let's see now we're gonna say what is it num to row dot length is that correct yes okay so what you're going to want to do is instead of just calling out the name of the array and saying dot length, you're going to want to say the length of the current row that this for loop is on. And let me get to that in a second. I'm just going to set this up and then go step by step through it and open up some new curly brackets. So what this is, the logic behind this is you're going to start at row zero which is right here and you're going to stay on row zero uh, for the length of that particular row and, uh, well actually while row is less than on that length okay so you're going to start at row zero and inside of here is what is executed and you're going to start at column zero and you're going to do that while num2 and the row dot length, which this and at this moment the row is zero, so it's going to say the length of this row. So while that is less than four, um, and then you're gonna we're gonna print, end up printing it out, and you're gonna increment column. And as soon as that is uh, no longer true, you're gonna go back into the the outer for loop and it's going to increment row so now row is going to be one and you're going to do the whole process again and go and pretty much print out row one column zero and then you're going to increment column so you're going to say row one column one row one column two 
and that's the logic behind this nested for loop and the array the two-dimensional array and this is very important if you did not have that in there it wouldn't work so let's print this out and see what happens sys out um, actually I'm gonna print it all on the same line each, I'm gonna print it out each row I'm going to or yeah each row I'm gonna print on one line so let's do it this way uh, num two and we're going to say row and we're going to say column and let's give this a backslash tab so this is an escape sequence I don't know if I made a video on these yet or not maybe in one of the beginner videos uh, one of the first videos I made but anytime you see a backslash it means escape sequence so there are certain codes where you can um, take advantage of that in this case backslash T is short for tab so that's going to make a little bit of space and since I'm not doing print line where it would print each value on its own line I'm trying to print each value on the row on the same line and I'm gonna concatenate it with a tab just so there is space in between so you can tell that they're separate numbers so we're gonna do that and right here it's gonna print out num2 and the current row so it would start at 0 and then it would go right into this for loop and run this until this is no longer true and jump out of that and it's gonna take whatever row it's at and whatever column it's at and print it out and on this outer for loop let me just do sys out and we're just going to do an empty print line so after it runs this and prints out uh, 25 5 9 and 27 on this uh, the first row it's going to get out of that for loop and print out a blank line which pretty much will put it onto a new line and then go back into the for loop so you pretty much will get these values without the commas and the and all that let's just see how it works Bam. Well, made it a little bit ugly with this thing in there. Let's run it again. Okay, so as you can see, that's that's a way of making, you know, you can make tables, data tables out of these type of uh, for loops and two-dimensional arrays. Um, game boards, you know, you can have zeros and x's and uh, blank spots and, you know, the it, it's endless. Use your imagination. Please put new numbers in there. Put different types of values different sizes and just mess with this that's how you learn and that's what Eclipse is so great for is if you make a mistake it's gonna make a big red mark over here and you can highlight over it and see what is wrong with it and you'll just continue to do you know you learn from your mistakes and uh, that's the way that's the way it is you never get it right constantly just just keep making mistakes that's actually pretty good advice just keep making mistakes and eventually everything's gonna make sense and this is a pretty cool thing uh, it was hard to grasp at first but as soon as you get it you know the the sky is the limit and I'm gonna end this video thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel and I believe some of my earlier videos probably sucked I would, might want to go in there and redo them I know my personality isn't the best in the world the most entertaining uh, but I'm, I feel like I'm getting a little bit better and I might want to go in there and redo some and also begin to do some new subjects so if anybody wants any uh, particular video made please send me a message or comment below and please subscribe and I also have a, a website nickprogramming.org but I'm not happy with it right now. I want to redo it completely. I also have a Facebook at Nick Programming, so please visit there too. Thank you all and have a great day.